Friday, it's shipping day, and that means there must be a mystery guest. Oh, there's a knock at the door. Who could that be? Let's find out. Oh my God, it's Alan Coins. <laughs> good morning, good morning. On good Instagram, morning. Hoboken Coins, come on in. Hello, hello, good morning, good morning. Hope everyone's doing well. Absolutely, thanks for coming across the river. Oh, no, of course, of course. I need Hoboken to, uh, Coins. I need to get into the city every so often. See my good friend Tommy at Stack in NYC. And I know you sent me a message, you need coffee stat. It's a very New York yes. thing. Yes, need to, you have to have a, a cup of coffee in the morning, otherwise your day just doesn't start off right. Absolutely. Let's get you fired up. I got your uh, mug ready. This was a present from Terry Thrasher. It is a Maui mug, authentic, imported from the islands, from one island to another. Let's get you some coffee. All right, so we got our coffee. Cheers, Cheers. very New York. We'll, we'll get some pizza in a little bit for lunch. I'm hungry, I hope you're hungry. I'm always hungry. And uh, a couple things, I love that his last name is Coins. Yes, with a K, with a K. With a K, <laughs> but it's still very fitting. So, for, for this. So, so let's see the general. So, but let me see the general. Um, who is the poor? Uh, this is Mike Mansilver. Mike Mansilver, and where is he from? He is from Florida, and he is bringing a lot of energy uh, and a lot of good vibes to Instagram that I appreciate. I love the content creators. I love the product producers, uh, people who are really putting forth an effort. They're just as important uh, as the buyers because you know when people put effort in and they're, and they're doing big things, they attract buyers. And we can all use that as a community. So, you know, to buyers, to sellers, never hesitate to make content, uh, have some fun. Uh, you know, if you notice something or, or you, you have a bit of information that you'd like to share, don't hesitate to share it. Let's check out this okay, piece for so now. So without further ado, here we go. A nice little box. Um, has some packing in here and I will pull that out. And here we go. I see a nice silver, Monkey, monkey head? Is this a gorilla? It's a gorilla. Head? It's a gorilla head. That's the general. That's oh, the um from the car insurance. Yeah. <laughs> no. no, different that's not, general. That's a different general. Okay, <laughs> I thought he was the same. Be twenty percent. He, he's from from, um, from the the jungle parliament. He was dispatched. Yeah. So I see the uh, has the NYC um designation on it. Absolutely. And uh, very shiny, great finish, if I may. One point nine ounces of of beautifully. Handcrafted silver. Very cool, very cool. I will put this back in here. Let's turn it. You have a, this, you know, we've been friends for, for well over a year now. And one of the things that's always fascinated about, fascinated me about you is that you have a background in banking. Correct. Um, I was at, I was an investment banker at JP Morgan for over 10 years, or about 10 years. Um, did, uh, did the hedge fund for a few years. Um, and now I'm actually a uh, corporate treasurer at a, um, a Fortune 500 company. Yes, and you're um, putting together big stuff. So with your background in banking, you know, this is something that's commonly talked about in, in the world of silvers, the manipulation. Do you have a take on that? I mean, we know it's real. People have gone to jail. Uh, yeah. For, I forget what the, the technical term is, spoofing? Correct. Right? Well, that's one way of manipulating the market. Um, spoofing is, for instance, you, you put out a fake order an order that you don't really intend to fill. Um, you do it either to, to move the price of the market or to kind of get some price discovery to see where kind of the next person might be uh, buying or selling. Or speculating yeah. or whatever, right? And then you're able to use that information to uh, kind of front run actual trades in, in the market. Um, interestingly, um, you know, the, the, the precious metals market, whether it's gold, um, aluminum, really, it's really the commodities market. Correct. A lot of it's paper assets, right? So when you have JP Morgan making a trade to Goldman Sachs, for instance, they could be trading 10,000 ounces um, on the contract or something. And there's really no gold there to, 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 to support that particular trade. In many cases, in many cases. Many cases. Um, you know, the contracts do have delivery language in them so that under certain circumstances, you might be forced to deliver, but there's always outs to that and such. So effectively, there is no gold well, right. back in those contracts. Cause, cause there, there, well, there's two separate markets, right? Because there's, there's the market for physical delivery, and then there's something like SLV, for example, which is strictly paper, and you cannot get the physical silver for your paper. It's explicit in their contract, unless you have a certain share where it's deliverable. 
Yes, that is correct. And, 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 you know, I'm talking about the the the, um, the banking houses typically are not trading in physical gold. They're right. just trading in the contracts. So what happens is they end up moving lots of ounces, millions of ounces, right? Um, which can move the market, obviously. Can. Um, but in reality, they're actually not moving the, the physical, uh, whether it's metal or any other commodity. Mm -hmm. So it is, you know, it does, you know, that type, you know, that type of infrastructure can be prone to allow manipulation um, in the market. Um, in that regard. One of the things that I always say is that the biggest impact of manipulation uh, is that it discourages uh, people from stacking physical silver. If you know there's not a perceived value in silver as an investment, people, we, we use the term capitulation, they give up, they sell their stacks, and they're done with silver, they're looking to other equity markets, for example. Um, and I think that's the danger because the collector's market, as an impact on the price of silver, represents about, it's about 40% of the physical use. Yeah, absolutely. So if you are whittling away at that collector's market and, and depressing the sentiment among collectors, then the price will naturally come down because the demand decreases. Correct. It's really, I mean, I'm going to make it even broader. It's any market. If, if, if the market participants don't have confidence in the fairness of the market, the, the valuation of the particular asset, whether it's real estate, silver, um, equities, even uh, corporate bonds, for instance. If, if the buyers and sellers don't have confidence in the market, don't feel that the um, prices are, are valid or are not being manipulated, you're, you're automatically gonna have a, drop um, a, a suppression in prices and people who will exit those particular markets and find markets that um, to invest in that they do have confidence in. And it's one of the beautiful things about Instagram is that we're able to create an environment uh, where there's joy, where there's, you know, people can really enjoy the hobby and the collecting aspect. And, you know, I talk about this all the time, Instagram is very powerful and it's gonna be very powerful going forward. Create content, enjoy the hobby, and preach it from the mountaintops. It's really true. Yeah, I mean, there's only probably, you know, a limited number of hobbies where the, the item that, that that's the, 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 uh, the focus of the hobby actually has some intrinsic value, right? It's the only one as far as I know. If you're, uh, you know, if you're quilting or you're making, you know, tr you know, you collect Christmas tree ornaments or something like that, there's not inherent or intrinsic value in those. You do it purely for the love of the hobby, whereas silver or coin collecting, they, they encompass both features of that, right? Yeah, that's right. You, 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 you love your silver, your, your pores, your coin, your numismatic, coin collecting, but additionally, there's also an intrinsic value to it as well. Um, you know, similar to, let's say, people who collect um, classic cars or something, exactly. something along those lines. You, you, you collect cars because you love them, you like to drive them, but there's also some intrinsic value to it as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. So it's Absolutely. really the best of both worlds is, is, you know, is how I look at it. Not that collecting Beanie Babies or quilting isn't fun, but you know, <laughs> silver you know, really is the best of both worlds. Well, thank you for this chat. It's always good to sit down with a good banker. No, thank you, uh, Tom, for having me over. Absolutely. For, for a cup of coffee, let me... Uh, we still have some pizza to eat, let, so... Let, let me pack up the... Uh, the general. The, 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 the general and such. Yes. So, thank you very much. Absolutely. My pleasure. So, thank you for coming over, man. Yeah, thank That's, you. Uh, I appreciate it. You know, of course, we're going to stay in touch. We are... Friends in real life, IRL. Yes. And we'll have to go to uh, Surf Bar again. Yeah, that'll be fun. And, um, yeah, we uh, got some tacos today, had some coffee, talked some silver, manipulation. Absolutely. It was a good day, man. And, you know, you're always welcome to come over anytime, come across the river. Perfect. And Thank you very much, Commissioner. Cheers. How are you stacking? How are you stacking? There you go. Bye. Bye. That was fun.